that are on the internet that are animated characters. We thought mm -hmm. it would be fun to have a live person give you attention and really perform these stories so people could get interested in books again mm -hmm. and really feel that when you hear a great story, it would provoke you to want to go to the library and read a story yourself or you know, learn more about that book or ask your parent to read it to you again mm -hmm. um, or want to read it yourself. Because so. every every story that's told on the site is actually told from a book. Someone's actually reading from the book. Yep, she's actually reading their, their videos that are shot in um, full screen. So when the videos, when you go in the Magic Library, it's, we tried to create this site that was very interactive for kids mm -hmm. because that's what they're, you know, you have to kind of, when kids are on the Internet, they sort of expect some kind of almost game-like It has to be setting. entertaining the entire time. It does. Yeah. <laughs> and so we have this magic library and the bookcase it opens and there's all kinds of fun sounds and you kind of have to lead the learning a little bit mm -hmm. um, with children because a lot of kids might not be able to read yet and so we have audio so if you can't read the title of the bookshelf like we have fun ones cry maybes and happily ever afters and stories about vegetables and mm -hmm. things and so then the, you can hear all these fun voices calling to you from the bookcase so you can pick them by that and then they open up and you can hear a synopsis of the story um, you can look at the book covers and pick them by the artwork because kids pick things by a lot of different they do. ways and they, so, they don't need to yet worry about the don't judge a book by the cover right they, <laughs> they, it's okay yeah. for them to do that at first yeah and we've hired all these great young illustrators so like the emperor's new clothes for example the illustrations are updated so he's got his bling on and his high top tennis shoes and so he's kind of very contemporary and you know and we've tried to you know, make them so the kids never know exactly what to expect with mm -hmm. the illustrations either. But the main part of the site really is our character, Mrs. P, reading the stories. And then there's just a few interstitials of of um, these illustrations. But we're really, we really want to have the children use their own imagination. Because when you hear a great story, you come up with what those characters are. And so that's a big part of what we were trying to do. So when I first, so before we go any further, let's tell everyone who Mrs. P is. Oh, yes, of course. Well, Mrs. P is Kathy Kenny, who's most famous for Ooh, being that's Mimi. a horrible noise. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's most famous for being Mimi on the Drew Carey Show. And, um... And so she's Mrs. P, and she's also a business partner in mm -hmm. Mrs. P. Mrs. P is owned by three people, um, Clay Graham, who was the executive producer and head writer of um, The Drew Carey Show, and that's how he knew Kathy, and he always from the get-go knew that she would be Mrs. P. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and she's just a, a wonderful, she comes from an improvisational theater background, so mm -hmm. she really can just perform these stories and make them so much fun and we've actually been going around the country doing live performances as well because mm -hmm. children really relate to characters that way you know even um, cartoons have their stuffed versions of characters that go yes. <laughs> and you know and the, they the, frighten me yeah terribly and, <laughs> actually I don't, I don't like them but <laughs> yeah when, when I worked in Hanna-Barbera you know we had our Scooby-Doo and the dog and you know mm -hmm. and just and the Disney characters, you know, are very yeah. popular for kids. And so mm -hmm. she she is a character, and um, kids really respond to her. And she goes and she reads at schools and libraries and different places. And and then um, and they they really relate to her. And then actually, we use a lot of green screen technology on our website as well. Mm -hmm. So when you come to the site, she's she's interacting with you, you yeah. know, and she's talking to you. And there's that suspended disbelief that children have, you know, just like with puppetry. Um, and so they really think that she's really talking, that she's really there in the computer. And we did a lot of testing with some little kids. And when Jill say, are you ready You know, to read the book? They're like, I'm ready. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I love that at the, <laughs> at the beginning of a Goldilocks and the Three Pairs, go get your pillow. Uh -huh. And, and <laughs> yeah, it's, they, really, and they it's be, really charming. Yeah. And they really feel like she's really giving her attention just to them, which mm -hmm. is, it's very magical. Um, and then it is very fun. Clay, who's a fantastic writer, has written these intros he's all the things on the website um all the humor is written mm -hmm. by him and the 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 intros at the beginning of each story kind of modernize them you mm -hmm. know all of these stories are the great classics the hans christian anderson's the brothers Grimm. you know all the um, public domain stories is what we're doing right now are they written are you taking them from a story 
an actual book or have they kind of been reworked verbally? We've been really trying to seek out the original ones. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of those versions out there that we found that we really sanitized. Like the Three Little Pigs was the one that, you know, we remember from our childhood. You know, and, I mean, the, the wolf goes down the chimney and he goes in the boiling pot and he you know, he's gone. Well, he, <laughs> and <laughs> I don't want to say it, but he dies. The way <laughs> I remember it is he ate one little pig uh -huh. and then he ate another little pig and then the third little pig cooked him. Exactly. And 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 if you go to the bookstore <laughs> now, they have completely changed the story that they end up friends and they go off happily ever yes. after. And so we were like, that's not the version we remember. So we actually really did try to seek out, and that's what's great about the internet. Actually, a lot of universities have really tried to find those original versions. So mm -hmm. we, we use those original versions, but then we update the material in the front end. Mm -hmm. So it's her telling a funny story before the lead into the story. So there's a little a, something an extra. An anecdote. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little anecdote. And so that there's something extra and, you know, and then that kind of makes it our own as well. And because you wouldn't necessarily, as a parent, you might not want your child to think that the wolf was, my kid would love the, the wolf being boiled in the vat of oil story, <laughs> but, um, you have age ranges listed for all of the stories. We do. And, you know, only parents know their children best. So we do have a parent warning on there. There's a whole note to parents about what our rating system is, how we created it. And we did work with a child development specialist mm -hmm. in Los Angeles to have her help us with kind of what are the age appropriate things for kids. But again, you know, there are some kids who are much more advanced and some that are very scared of things. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we hope that, um, parents do monitor their young children's use on the internet and what we've really found is that mrs p she's very very popular with schools and libraries because it is a free website mm -hmm. and there's no advertising so that's very appealing it's for very nice. schools and libraries and um, in fact we're very proud because we just got the american library association um honor of best site for kids fantastic and, yeah and so that's a big part of our audience. And so um, I think they definitely use the age appropriateness for their classrooms. Mm -hmm. and, but we have had, we did create a, a scary story room because we did get letters from kids. A lot of kids like to be scared. You know, I don't know if you remember when you were little, but you know, there's something really in, kind of exciting about getting my being daughter scared. falls into that category <laughs> yeah. as long as you can be scared in a comforting environment exactly. yeah as long as you know it's going to turn out okay right, there's right. something really exhilarating yeah so we did create this scary room and you know so a few little kids are like why does mrs p have a doll locked in a cage and you know because <laughs> there and there's a ghost parrot and there's a creepy doll creepy clara and mm -hmm. some little kids have they're like get rid of creepy clara <laughs> they don't like creepy clara but then other kids love the scary room mm -hmm. you know so um that's probably the only thing we've been written about that is that uh, where someone on the site has been you know either they love the scary room or they're they're scared too scared of the scary room <laughs> so so i want to get into the the back end of the site a little mm -hmm. bit and the technology behind it but before i do uh, you brought some some drawings oh yes we mrs p has been like i said going around the country and she reads to children at um different bookstores and schools and they send her these personal thank you notes and I just wanted to share, you know, how they visualize her. You can see her red wig and they just love to, um, they take her little logo and then this one's just so precious where how little they, <laughs> they make They're themselves so tiny. and she's such, she's so giant and then they, they write, you know, thank you and you know, it's just so cute how they have their little books and Again, they put the books too. all over and they're very, yeah, and this one's probably, this one's great. <laughs> Where they're very, very tiny and she's very, very big. <laughs> and, but they, and they really just have fun. And this person, they actually, she reads from a magical book, um, mm -hmm. just like she does on the website when she does live performances. And this child actually drew a very nice magic book and just wrote, you know, thank you for inviting us to the field trip. My favorite part is when they read Jack and the Beanstalk story. Thank you, Mrs. P, for reading us. The story is very, and you have to read how they spell beautiful. <laughs> B-U-T-E-I-L-F-U-L. <laughs> and they're just so, beautiful. and the letters that they write on the website are like that, mm -hmm. too. They're just, you know, we were wondering if children were really writing them. But I was like, you know, I don't think the parents could come up with the spelling as great as this if they were trying to yeah. do that, so... I agree. Very okay, helpful. so let's talk. Let's start with the with the iPhone, yeah. I, iTouch. So what we did um, with Mrs. P is we filmed um, our whole our whole site was created in a programming language called Flex, which mm -hmm. is not that usual. Uh, it's not the run of the mill language that people code in, mm -hmm. and 
we did that because um, the whole site is done in flash and we try and load everything before you get there mm -hmm. um, and so it does take we have some interstitial pages to let you know that there's all this stuff that's going to happen because we have a ton of video and uh, everything in the room is interactive so there's her window people come to visit her and there's kids videos and kids who talk to mrs p in the window and the flowers change all her picture frames and so there's a lot of content and there was really it's kind of a technical challenge to figure out how do you preload all that content or mm -hmm. do you at the time that someone clicks on it do you want it to open up another window and load and we didn't think that was very magical no. so we really you know we were trying to do something where maybe the internet's quite not there yet maybe a little step ahead of that and um so we and we also wanted to stream all our content because the site is free the, our model for making money is that we license our content other places afterwards so we didn't want people to be able to download our content and so we just we we're the first people in the world actually um or one of them to be the first commercial website to use um, the flash media server 3.5 so with dynamic streaming so that it can be smart enough to know like, oh, you only have a connection that's this speed. Well, I'm going to go pull, and we'll, we make videos in multiple sizes. I'm mm -hmm. going to pull this size so that you can get the best experience possible. And right now, um, what we did, we launched in November of last year. So mm -hmm. just, just been up for maybe about six months. And we did put a little test for to let you know, like you might be speed of a horse or a Toyota or, you know, <laughs> some of you have these different categories. But to help you, if you're, you know, if you don't have the greatest connection home, it'll turn, you could let you know which features you could turn off to make it faster so that the videos will work better for you. Because there are a lot of challenges and you want people to have a good experience. Correct. Um, and maybe everything all at once isn't the best experience exactly, for everyone. Exactly, right. And so, you know, if you know, like, well, I just really want to watch the video and I'm not going to do all this other stuff right now, you can turn those things off so that the video will work better. And so that's one of the little um, icons on the actual site. And then a lot of people requested, in Mrs. P, we tried to, um, with Kathy and Clay, um, they really worked together to create this voice of the character mm -hmm. and her personality and her she, she has kind of a fun Irish accent yes. and so that she would be something that parents would also enjoy maybe you know if you're a parent and yeah. you have to listen to sometimes things probably over and over and over again and you might like go oh <laughs> you know with some of the please yeah no more <laughs> yeah I haven't reached that point yet I'm fine <laughs> <laughs> with Mrs. P, that's good. So it was a good voice. Yeah, yeah. so we tried to have a voice that you might be kind of pleasing, you know, to mm -hmm. like if you're a parent, you have to listen to that story over and over again. And so, um, and a lot of p parents said, you know, we got it, we'd love to take her, we'd love my kid to listen to this on the, the plane or the train or on a long trip or something. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, her, she's available on iTunes so that you can download her for 99 cents for the stories. And a lot of times on there, because we tried to make the stories like more like a half hour, a lot of them, you know, so sometimes you get three stories on it, then one download for 99 cents because nice. they're, yeah. And um, so they're very affordable and we also have a free music video on there, which is what I have on here. But I just wanted to show how great it actually does look, um, the way we shot them in HD. Um, they translate really nicely to this little tiny screen. Um, and, uh, you know, so that people can enjoy them on this small format as well. Mm -hmm. On those long plane trips and train trips. And yeah. <laughs> or, you know, I don't know if you're me and you're sitting in a restaurant and your child just really would like the food to come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I just kind of, in you know, and, and it's sort of fun. And there's also another, um, uh, it's called Kid Thing, which is for parents who don't want their kids on the internet. It's mm -hmm. a free software that you can download, and then parents can go shop in their store, and Mrs. P is in their store. So then your child's on the computer, but they're not connected to the internet. But they've, you've already downloaded Mrs. P onto your your uh, in your store, and yeah. your kid can pick, and they have other great, you know, they have all the Dr. Seuss and you know Mrs. P and some other stories, and so, and that's kind of. What we're doing is trying to find these other venues where parents can pick and choose which venue that it is that Correct. they want to have their child. So Mrs. P. com is the destination, and everything that you have is there. 
Right now, yeah. And yeah. what we do is we add usually two stories a month, mm -hmm. usually the beginning and the middle of the month. And, and is that always what whatever the ice cream truck is? Yeah. yeah. And in fact, um, um, John, my husband, who's here, he actually designs all this fun little icon. So every month there's a fun new little vehicle that delivers the mm -hmm. things with fun music. And um, and then there's, coming up in um, on July 29th, we actually have a... Uh, something new that we're doing, we're actually doing a chapter book and we're doing Alice in Wonderland. So every day for 12 days, she'll read a chapter from that book, which will be really fun. Oh, so I think oh, we have a little music video. video playing. So this is Mrs. P's theme song and you can download this um, and it's very kid-like and so you can download it on, the, um, on iTunes for free. And we put it up, and I tweeted about it, and mm -hmm. I got 17,000 downloads. Wow. <laughs> I know. I was like, wow, there's a lot of people on Twitter that the mom blogs go out yeah. to, and, and they like free stuff right now. Free is very big. So. Yes. Free yeah. is the new free. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's our, yeah, she has, and that actually was written by one of the lighting crew. Um, as you know, most, we shoot actually down in Los Angeles and Hollywood, mm -hmm. and um, everyone who's in the entertainment industry actually likes to do, they do something on the side. So yeah. <laughs> everyone does something else. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So I think Portland is very much the same way. Everybody yeah, in every Portland, creative people, they have their, their thing that they do for work and then they have their side project that they do. Oh, this is our other thing. Yeah. So. I think creative people are, you know, usually multi-layered <laughs> in their creativity. And, and what's really been fun is that we actually have hired, all our illustrators are from Portland. Um, mm -hmm. They're from. They're usually people that have just gotten out of um, school, and they're mm -hmm. very excited to. We pay them, so they're <laughs> excited to have something that they can kind of hang their hat on, and something that's pretty recognizable that gets a lot of press, and um, that they can put in their portfolio. So that's yeah. very nice for them. And our sound person, um, Dave Barberos, he does all the stuff for the Blazers too. Mm -hmm. He does all our sound and for the site and. Um, Miles Spritzman does all the video editing, and um, another Mark Luvas does all our backend programming, and so we, everyone is here at Portland located except for the actual um, shoots that we do. Um, and so it's kind of neat that everyone, and then as I mentioned, um, John, my husband, does all the other graphic design for the site, which is really fun. So we have a big family operation. <laughs> so where did the idea for MrsP.com come from? So it started in, I guess it was like May. 2007 mm -hmm. um, or maybe like June 2007 and my friend Clay um, he and I had both um, worked together very early on in the entertainment industry for Norman Lear and he um, my mom had just passed away and he and he she was called Mrs. P my last name is Platts and everyone called her Mrs. P and he had had an idea for um, reading bedtime stories to adults mm -hmm. and I have a strong children's background from working at Hanna-Barbera and stuff so kind of morphed in when we talked about it it we got John together and we talked about what would something like this look like as a website and it was pretty cool because John drew out actually this whole room and we'd never been to Kathy's house or seen the real Mrs. P room <laughs> mm -hmm. we had no idea what it looked like but we were thinking what would be what would be kind of magical and what would be sort of fun if we were going to create a website and so um and then it was really weird because when then Clay went down to her house and took a bunch of pictures of her house it was like almost like we had been to her house <laughs> and so and it just kind of became this um character and it kind of just really very collaboratively with Kathy kind of trying on all these wigs and coming up with, you know, what would this, you know, mm -hmm. should she look like this and what kind of, she, she, they did this whole fun photo shoot with all these kind of looks that she had and to kind of tap into that. And so, um, you know, so I think like the seed was the bedtime story idea and then it sort of morphed from that into the whole Mrs. P and then it turned out that the only domain name that was available of, you know, Mrs. A through Z, Mrs. P was the only one available. So it wow. kind of was like a kismet thing. So yeah. it, was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. That is very cool. So it was kind of fun. And then we just had a lot of fun, you know, thinking about all the fun things that you'd want to put in our magic room. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a magic dictionary. We can look up words. Um, her dog on the couch is, turns into an animated dog, but he's not like your everyday animated dog. He does all kinds of fun little tricks when, you know, you type in the word to learn how to spell a little bit and so we and we keep just coming up with fun new things that we can add and I think we've got 
Um, I think we filmed almost 50 stories so far. Wow. Um, and then we just keep planning on adding to the content and having books and DVDs available because books are a really big part. Um, they are. For Mrs. P. <laughs> and actually, from very early on, we partnered with Pals Books. Mm -hmm. And on their website, um, they have a Mrs. P library, and all the books that Mrs. P reads are available on the Pals website. Fantastic. So we always point people when we go to book fairs where she reads and um, anytime you know, when she was on the CBS morning show and so in, with our nice relationship with them and then we had her go read it, pals, but we try and always promote their website too because we mm -hmm. think it's really important. We'd love these kids to go out and buy all these books yeah. that she reads and get to know because these are some of the greatest stories of all time, you know, and that's why they've been around so long. So, so the, the bottom line of it is really to promote literacy, to get children to want to read. Yeah, we yeah. and you know we are not educators, so we do not tout ourselves as an education site because I think to do that you really need to have the educators designing the site. And there's plenty of people, there are plenty of sites out there like that. So we decided it would be kind of more fun to have her be an entertaining character, kind of like a Mr. Rogers for the broadband generation in a way. Um, where <laughs> she, she's... I love that. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> Retweet that, Mr. Rogers, for the broadband generation. I love that. Yeah. I think it's interesting that you put it that way because the first time I looked at it, I kind of thought that I was like, wow, it's it's just TV on the Internet. Yeah, that's and there isn't that and really to, for kids. Correct. To us, we, we got rid of our cable. Um, we don't want our daughter watching commercial television. Right. When we had cable TV, we used strictly used a TiVo so that right. we could record the things that didn't have commercial breaks or fast forward through them. Right. And so for me, it's, it, you know, it's the step forward. It's, it, it, it kind of pushes that away. If you guys are going to advertise, you need to find a better way to advertise because there are other options available. And look, here's right. a wonderful, wonderful website that your kid can watch. That's going to be age and content appropriate. And it has no ads. And, it ha right. and no we, one's trying to sell your kid yeah. anything except, well, they're trying to sell the kid books. Right. But and, you don't care but, who made the book. Yeah. <laughs> and well, and we're not actually even, we don't push, I mean, we're Correct. not pushing that on this. So it's just, it, we hope that they, that after hearing the story, you know, just like when you read a story to your own child or your teacher does, and unfortunately in, in this day and age, a lot of kids don't get either of those things done. Mm -hmm. And so um, we thought there was kind of a gap there mm -hmm. and we wanted to, we, we all grew up loving books and being fortunate enough to have our parents, um, the, the real Mrs. P, my mom was very involved in the great books program and was a librarian mm -hmm. and, you know, that, and, um, I know we raised our son to love the library and he still checks out books all the time from the library and we never had video games and things like that and both Clink. Kathy, just total book lovers, and they we all kind of felt like that was a big part of um, how we kind of came out, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that there was there wasn't this real character, um, and there also everything was very commercial. So we wanted to kind of use high tech and the 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 whole back end and make you know because it's actually a very technically involved site, but mm -hmm. we wanted the final product to actually seem very low tech mm -hmm. and not be all filled with, you know, all these things going on. We just wanted the child to use their own imagination. And that is something, you know, that I think is what we really need in the world are these creative thinkers. And so we were hoping that maybe that would inspire some of the children to just, instead of having all of it done for them, Correct. all these other games and all these other, you know, there's so much media out there for them. But if they're just hearing, because that's a, the beauty of you don't even have, you can just listen mm -hmm. even to her and you can be inspired by her great performance. So, um, I, that's, and I think you hit the nail on the head with it is it, it's very high tech, but you wanted it to seem low tech. Mm -hmm. What I really appreciate about it is all the technology that had to go into it, all the work that had to go into it, but it's still about stories and it's right. still about books. And you're, right. you're at once encouraging children to learn and to use the internet which is going to be an integral part of anyone's life from right. this point on. But you're also showing them, hey, don't, you know, books, look, it's a book. It's not just a book. It's a magic book. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. And I think that's really important. And I think that there's there's a point right now where some people are like, oh, well, no, we'll just do this on the computer and it doesn't matter anymore. And we still have shelves and shelves and shelves of books in right. our house because right. we can't not have them. And our daughter has shelves of books and we're probably turning her into a pack rat, but <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, beside that's a the good point. good kind of pack rat, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and and you know we I mean I I I love the tangible book, but mm -hmm. we also know that the, we live in a world right now where technology is something that younger and younger they're starting to use. So that's why we decided like, well, let's try and fill this kind of gap and not that we, we don't want to replace reading to your child at all, but mm -hmm. we do, you know, with teachers, for example, we have read-along options on all the books. Mm -hmm. And so if the teacher's actually reading that book, but then a kid needs a little more help, they can actually, a lot of the schools now have, thanks to the you know Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and stuff, they've actually put, there's a lot of computers in schools and in the libraries. So maybe the kids could go and they could even do the read-along options. And we've gotten mm -hmm. letters sent to Mrs. P from kids in Japan that are learning to speak English from reading along with Mrs. P, which I'm like, that's so cool. That's very cool. You know, and also even older kids than I would have thought who like to read, hear a story from Mrs. P of, as they're finishing up their homework or they mm -hmm. need a break, and, then, and they're actually like in high school, mm -hmm. but they just find it comforting. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, stories, in the, and actually quite a few older people, actually, you know, grandparents who are doing this with their grandchildren, yeah. They love hearing these stories again, mm -hmm. you know, because they haven't heard a story. And so we were kind of like, it's kind of neat because everybody actually likes having a story told to them. <laughs> You're Everyone never too does. old. <laughs> Everyone does like having a story told to them. It's true. There are, there are uh, uh, I don't know, it, this is this is the other side of the storytelling spectrum, but are you familiar with the Back Fence series? No. It, it's a, a put on by Melissa Lyon and Frame Masters here in Portland. Hmm. And they do every couple months events and they have a, bunch, a series of storytellers they're not reading a book but they're telling true life stories oh, sure. and it's okay. just based off of the realization that everyone loves to have stories told to them right. everyone loves to hear someone else tell a story that they haven't right. heard before right. and I think that this goes a long way to encouraging children to love stories into the future right so that's our hope with Mrs. P is that it'll inspire kids to want to go get books and write their own stories. We're actually going to do a writing yeah, contest. I saw that. I saw yeah. That. yeah. And it's going to, we're going to launch it in August, kind of at the end of August when mm -hmm. school, some places is starting and, um, you know, so we'll go through September. Um, but the prizes, we're going to have two grand prizes with two different age categories, but Mrs. P will actually record your story and we'll have oh. hire the illustrators to illustrate it and it'll be on the website where they can show all their friends. And we were thinking like, that, you know, if I was a kid, I would think that is like the coolest thing. And then we'll actually make them a bound book of their story and send it to them. Mm -hmm. Um, but we thought, and PALS is going to actually also donate some gift certificates to the other render up winners Fantastic. and, and the real winners too, yeah. we'll get those as well. But we thought that would be, you know, really great to also inspire children to write their own stories, you know, to realize that storytelling is something they can be part of as well. So that's fantastic. Um, before we go, why don't you tell everyone where they can find Mrs. P on the internet? Okay, Mrs. P dot com. <laughs> yeah, my special Mrs. P shirt um, is www.mrsp.com. dot com, mm -hmm. and Mrs. P also has a Twitter page, and she's Mrs. P Storytime. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. P was already taken, unfortunately, on the Twitter. <laughs> um, but and we're actually finding that very fun to connect with moms and educators and homeschoolers, and so it's been actually a wonderful community on Twitter for Mrs. P. Excellent. So, but Mrs. P. Com. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us, Dana. Uh, join us next week when we talk with Nate Angel. And also, if you're going to be at the Web Visions Conference, come by and see us. We'll be in the exhibition hall. We'll be broadcasting live Thursday and Friday. Stay tuned for after hours. Good night, everybody.